right, welcome back to Hashtag IQT Day. This is turning out already to be a crazy, exciting day. We see our analysts and press and our influencers are all starting to pile in, being joined by another special guest here, Bill McCabe. Bill, how's it going? Great, thank you very much for having me. Pleasure to be here, so yeah. Flew all the way in from, from Denver, I yes. believe. Uh -huh. Exactly. Well, welcome to uh, welcome to NYC. We're in the heart of New York today to bring this live event to you uh, virtually on social media, all around the world. It's going to be a good one. So, Bill, let's let's talk a little bit about IoT recruiting, which is really kind of your your specialty. How did you kind of get involved in this? And, and let's talk about how everything kind of came together. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I've been recruiting for about 20 years, and I got kind of involved in IoT through some things I was doing with IBM about a year and a half, two years ago. And I thought it was a good area that I wanted to kind of be in, to kind of you know, put my stake in the ground, that kind of thing. And so the more I got involved, the more I kind of realized that I needed to kind of you know, promote my own content and do some things to kind of get, get my name out there. So um, I, I've tried to become, like I said, an influencer, and I, I've done pretty well on some, some areas of influence, as well as actually getting, uh, getting more searches in, the, in that area, in terms of Internet of Things. So Content is always key and, and king, and you know, when, when you think about IOT and, and recruiting, what, what does good content look like, I guess? Well, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of content about how difficult the skill set is to find for the traditional IOT people, because there's a number of different areas that you need to know about. You need to know about hardware, software, networks, data analytics, you need to, I mean, there's a, there's a whole different uh, set of skill sets, and, and, and really it's the combination of skill sets, I think because to really fully understand the scope and the breadth and depth of IoT, I think you need to sort of come from a little bit of all those disciplines, basically. So, so I would imagine if you, you, know, you think about an industry perspective, you know, even outside of, of Dell Technologies, but you know, the, the stress that IoT in general is, is putting on you know, organizations and really kind of having organizations have to, to shift and change, how, how are you seeing this kind of evolve yourself? A lot of the customers that we deal with and a lot of the things that, I've had discussions with some of the people here at Dell and some of their prime customers, and what they're telling me is that basically this puts stresses on the organization in the sense that all the various different pillars of the organization now have, kind of have to work together. The IT department, the, the, the uh, marketing department, the sales department, those types of things. Whereas the kinds of projects that I, uh, the IoT uh, you know, causes basically makes them all kind of work together where they, they traditionally have not done that. They've all sort of kind of existed in their own silos and kind of you know, been, been independent of each other. So it, it's been an interesting uh, switch for that basically. Thing. Interesting switch, and uh, I think the other big theme, you know, the theme today, making things smarter and really, you know, looking into the future. It's going to be an exciting one. So uh, I, I love the topic of, of, of HR and really what they need to focus on. So if I'm in HR at an organization, what am I focusing on when it's when it comes to IoT? Well, you know, every, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence and HR, and so I think there's going to be some advances and some things that make kind of uh, you know looking at all that information and trying to sift through that information quicker, easier, more efficient. But I think HR, we also have to not forget the human side. Because uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a kind of a human-based decision, it's still a human-based thing, you know, kind of related to you know, talking to people. I mean, I mean, we still have to get to that point where we kind of evaluate a certain person based on you know, how they deal with other people, that kind of thing, how they work with other people, those kinds of things. So. So I enjoyed earlier when, uh, when we were chatting, we talked a little bit about hackathons. And I, I love if you could tell the audience out there who, who isn't aware of what a hackathon is, really what it is and how it, how it I guess, relates to what we're doing well, here. Um, it's interesting because there were some companies that we've studied that basically have put on what's called a hackathon, which is a contest, basically, um, uh, you know, cybersecurity, that, that they would have to, they, they would have a certain task of trying to break into a certain system, you know, software, hardware, whatever, that kind of thing. So a hackathon is just that, it would be a contest. And, and some companies have actually used that uh, in their hiring process. Basically put on a hackathon so that they could actually try to see if there's, you know, people that might want to, you know, be, be able to kind of work for their company in that particular area. Cybersecurity, as you know, is one of the most talked about topics of IoT and one, one of the, the biggest fears, basically. So. Cybersecurity is always key. Quick shout out to our friends at RSA Security and SecureWorks. Um, obviously, you know, one last thing I wanted to ask you was just your thoughts in general on today. You know, we have a, a, a jam-packed lineup and, you know, Michael will be on stage. Jeremy, what are you looking forward to? What do, what do you want to hear today? Um, I'm very interested to look and see kind of what their strategy is and kind of where they want to play. You know, I know since the EMC 
you know, acquisition, they've, they've sort of, you know, gotten into a few different areas from the traditional um, company that was started by Michael in his dorm room. And, you know, uh, most people know Dell is basically they bought their last computer from Dell, but there's a lot more facets to Dell. So I, I'm interested in learning more about that and trying to see how they can, you know, w weave that into IoT. How about just thinking too, like in terms of, of Dell technologies, you know, over the years and how, how this IoT has involved, evolved, what are your thoughts on, on, on where this is going and, and, and you know, how this will kind of serve as a staple to move forward, I guess? I think it's just going to get bigger and better. I mean, you hear about it, you know, the hype curve, that kind of thing. I, I think we're going to hear more and more about this and basically uh, as we get more mature in this industry, I think there's going to be more, better, you know, easier use cases. There's going to be things that companies are going to start, you know, uh, kind of doing, you know, kind of, uh, exponentially, uh, you know, kind of like some of the projects that have gone on in the last 20 years. So we're pretty excited about the future and about, you know, kind of what we'll see from uh, companies like Dell and, and other people in this uh, in this area. So it's going to be a crazy future. It's going to be a fun future, and we're going to be talking about that all today. Bill, we really appreciate the time here. We uh, we'll, we'll be chatting with you, and we'll uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for for the interview portion. We're going to now turn it over to a break, and we'll be back soon with more special guests. <laughs>